Hello and welcome to Croflands Community Church. I hope you're all keeping well. What is he doing, I hear you say? Well, I'm exploring the concept of smoke and mirrors, although I am struggling a bit with the smoke. Not sure if you can see that. We have got a little bit of smoke in here. <laughs> in life, much of what we see and portray is not always genuine and transparent, whether it be trying to understand an electricity tariff or the little half-truths we tell to slip through life. We are surrounded by the concept of smoke and mirrors. Never quite sure if something or someone are quite what they seem. However, Jesus came to bring us into the light and to lead us into truth, to clearly show us the way and deliver us from deception. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we worship and praise you today because you are completely genuine and faithful to all your promises. Thank you that you don't use smoke and mirrors to coerce us, but you lovingly tell us the truth. We praise you that you don't change your mind about us when the going gets tough, but you are so committed to us that you were willing to go all the way to the cross, where your love for us was clearly displayed. We love you because you first loved us. Help us become people who are transparent as the very basis of our intimacy with you. Where parts of us are hidden and areas of our lives do not align with the persona we present to others, please shine your light and help us to respond to your grace with honesty and humility. We ask that you would bless every member of our church family today, especially those who are in pain or poorly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some verses from the Bible. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. 
Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and consciences are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient and unfit for doing anything good. Watch yourselves carefully so you don't get contaminated with Pharisee yeast, Pharisee phoniness. You can't keep your true self hidden forever. Before long you'll be exposed. You can't hide behind a religious mask forever. Sooner or later the mask will slip and your true face will be known. You can't whisper one thing in private and preach the opposite in public. The day is coming when those whispers will be repeated all over town. Do you suppose, O oh man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Hello. Today we are looking at the last in the series of our core values. And it's been quite a hike together actually, hasn't it? We began quite a few weeks ago now, um, starting off the series by looking at the fact that we want to be rooted in the authority of the Bible, with Jesus central in all we do. We want spirit-led prayer and worship to be at the heart of our meeting together. We want to be a church that is welcoming, that is loving, humble, compassionate. We want to be a church that is forgiving, connecting and relevant. We've looked at pursuing holiness and today we come to our last core value which is operating with transparency and integrity. Today we're looking at transparency. But first a welcome to Jane who's going to briefly share something, the relevance of which will become apparent as we progress. Thank you Jane. Hi everyone, I just want to tell you one of my uh, childhood um, stories. This one's quite a good one actually. Um, when I was, I don't know how old I was, a small child, I went away with my parents on holiday and we went to this fun fair and at the fun fair uh, there was a big whale on the back of a trailer, I think it had washed up onto the beach or something like that and they were putting it on display. And you had to go and pay, obviously, you, they wouldn't let you in for free. 
and my dad thought oh educational opportunity let's take the girls in and they can have a look at this this whale well when I got in there and I looked at this whale I just took one look at it I thought that's not a whale that's a shark there's no way that's a whale okay no Jane it's a whale look at the blowhole no it's a shark look Sharks have gills, Jane. This doesn't have any gills. Just look at it. It looks, it is a whale. And I'm going, no, 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 it's not. Let's face it. This is a whale. Can you see how cute it is? It's got this little bubble head, hasn't it? And a really nice little smile. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This is a whale. And I know because my parents told me it was a whale. My teachers told me it was a whale, and it was a whale. My point is, do you have the correct image in your mind of who God truly is? His true nature, his true character. But what I'm trying to say is, it was only through that exposure to the true identity of what a, real, a whale really looks like, that... I learned that the image that I had was actually wrong and it's the same when we read the Bible we need to expose ourselves to Jesus's true nature and get to know him and once we get to know just how much he loves us I mean it's undeniable he sent his only son to die on the cross for us in our place he took the punishment that we deserve you know, how much more love can we be shown by our Heavenly Father? Jesus Christ. 
Now, we have stated in our core values that we want to be a church that operates with integrity and transparency. But what does it mean to be a transparent person and a transparent church? Well, the definition of transparency means that it allows light to show through. Transparency is where light is shining through something so that the objects behind can be distinctly seen. If something is transparent, it is see-through. It's clear, easy to detect. What you see is what you get. What does it mean to be transparent? Well, people trust you because they see that you have nothing to hide. You are honest, credible, a person or church who has integrity, not divided. The inside of you matches the external persona that you put out there for people to see. You are open and vulnerable by being real. You are accountable, able to be explained and understood. Where there is no transparency, then it's all too easy for suspicion to arise or corruption to take root. If we are not genuine, then there's the risk at some point of losing everything because there is the likelihood of perhaps being exposed. As a church leadership team, we are committed to transparency as one of our core values and you are able to hold us to account if you think otherwise. Where there is no transparency between church leaders and the church, then all too often those undercurrents of discontent can ripple through and a church becomes divided. Sometimes people just leave, often without explaining why, leaving hurt on both sides. Does transparency within a church mean that we are all expected to overshare intimate details of our lives with everyone? Not at all. It's hugely beneficial to share deeply with one or two people that we trust and house groups are often places where people feel able to do that. Being a transparent church is something that we are strategic and purposeful about in the way that we share information, admit our mistakes or our weaknesses, handle our finances or take decisions and define ourselves so that others can see openness and reality. A transparent church is a church that is at the very centre what it says on the tin. A transparent church is made up of individuals who as part of having integrity as a Christian are committed to being transparent. Today we're going to look at Jesus, the transparent man. I was so encouraged and excited preparing this when seeing the life of Jesus through our definition of transparency, allowing light to shine through so that things behind can be clearly seen. Because the more I look at Jesus and the way that he lived, I see for myself what God is really like. He is not who I perceived him to be through the various impressions I had picked up along the way. And as Jane shared earlier, when her exposure to a real whale in no way matched what she believed a whale looked like, there is a monumental shift that takes place in our understanding when we take a good look at the real thing. When we take a good look at Jesus, we see that his life was, and still is, a window in which passers-by can look through and see God as he really is. Like Jesus, your life and mine is like a transparent window by a busy road through which passers-by can look. The challenge is, what do they see? So we must all release the light 
the transparent man and we're going to do that briefly under four headings and then Mervyn's going to share a personal aspect and then we'll bring a conclusion together as we wrap up and see what we can take away into our week. So heading number one, Jesus the transparent man shows us what God is like. In so many instances we see the light of heaven shining through Jesus so that the principles of heaven and the kingdom of God behind everything that he did or said could be really clearly seen here on the earth. We've seen the heart of God revealed so often recently through the parables Jesus told or the restoration that he brought in the lives of some of the characters that we have looked at in our services together. The prodigal son, the woman caught out committing adultery, the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, the man called Legion whose mental health and self-harming and demon possession had just driven him crazy, the widow whose only son had died. On and on we could go. Jesus, the transparent man, is transmitting the light of heaven to planet earth. And in John 14 and verse 9, Jesus says, that anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Here's our second heading. Jesus the transparent man attracts attention. 
The light of heaven shining through the light of Jesus attracted thousands of followers, both during his 33 years here on the earth and in the 2000 years or so since. His life stood out in a way that could not help but attract attention and raise eyebrows. People were attracted by the miracles he performed. He drew the attention of religious leaders because he criticised them, exposing their hypocrisy and double standards, and they felt threatened by him. He claimed to be the Son of God. That certainly got him noticed and caused a great deal of anger in some quarters. He hung out with people who were social outcasts, lepers, prostitutes, con men, those who were blatantly sinning. His elevation of women and the respect he showed them was extremely unusual in that culture. He was different. He was controversial. It was expected that as the Messiah, he would drive out the Romans through force. And yet he taught people to love their enemies. That's a tough one to get your head around for sure. He caught the attention of the Romans. They suspected that he may be yet another rebel leader who could potentially rise up against them. So they kept an eye on things. They were certainly uneasy about the massive growth of his popularity. Jesus, the transparent man, attracted attention. Jesus still attracts attention. He hasn't faded away into history as some vague figure from the past. And here's heading number three. Jesus, the transparent man, withstands extreme scrutiny. As his popularity grew, his transparency was placed firmly under the microscope for public scrutiny and examination. He lived under the extreme scrutiny of those who were watching him constantly, just looking to nitpick and find the smallest trace of sin in order to catch him out. In John 8, we find the Pharisees scrutinising his life, trying to unpick some small detail. And in verse 46, Jesus asks, Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Under the microscope of their scrutiny, Jesus was found to be without sin. Instead, they saw what usually could not be seen. They saw God. They saw righteousness and holiness, justice and mercy. In the transparent life of Jesus, heaven was opened for all to see. His life is still under scrutiny even today. In fact, he probably faces more examination now than when he was here on the earth. Every part of his life is pulled to pieces and examined from every angle, every word, phrase or sentence, every interaction with others, everything he did continues to be under the microscope where scholars and experts dissect and analyse every minute detail of his life and still even today not one person can convict him of sin and our fourth heading Jesus the transparent man brings a reaction the transparent life that Jesus lived produced quite polarized reactions as it always does when people encounter him it's very easy to be indifferent when you haven't met someone, you haven't encountered them. But when we are confronted with Jesus Christ, it forces us to react. Wherever Jesus drew followers, we see that for some, his transparent life brought about a reaction of humility and repentance. Whereas for others, his life fueled a reaction of hatred and pride. Why? Because in the light, that was shining from him, their hypocrisy and sin was exposed. Why does the transparent life of Jesus cause such a violent extreme reaction, both in his earthly life and now? And the reaction of those Jewish leaders who encountered him, 
sort of gives us a sense that it must surely be that most untransparent quality of hypocrisy, the opaque life where what you see on the outside does not match the inside. And for those leaders, it was exposed and they felt threatened. Because when placed next to Jesus, the light of heaven shines into our interior lives and reveals that the way we appear to be and the reality of who we are may be entirely different. And so I wonder, what reaction does Jesus, the transparent man, produce in you and me? That's a really key question that we can take with us out into the week. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will be working in all our lives this week and touching on our reactions and the way that we view Jesus. And so as with all of our core values that we have looked at as part of this series, Jesus clearly shows us what living transparently looks like as Christians, whether in our personal lives or with each other as part of the church. We are like a window through which others can look and what they see will give them a clear reflection as to what they think God is like. This reflection at times may be inaccurate or distorted, just as the picture of the whale did not adequately or correctly show Jane what a whale truly looked like. And there is a perception out there amongst many people that the church in general is full of hypocrites. Now, if they are referring to people that they know who profess to follow Jesus and yet clearly are not following him, then they may well be right. But there is often a perception from outside that those who follow Jesus should somehow instantly match up to Jesus Their lives should display all the characteristics of God, love, acceptance, holiness, justice, mercy, forgiveness. And those who follow Jesus are expected by outsiders to attract attention because they are different. And the details of our lives are scrutinised and examined to see if what is actually seen is what you get when you look inside. And all too often, Christians can be written off as hypocrites, but is that always fair? Now, Jesus is always our example and the one that we aspire to be like as we journey with him. He is the one who will produce his likeness in us as we are honest and transparent with him. The one thing he requires from us is transparency. Psalm 51 and verse 6 says, Surely you desire integrity in the inner self and you teach me wisdom deep within. Another translation says, Surely you desire truth in the innermost parts. Now as followers of Jesus, we are on a journey to become more like him as his light penetrates more deeply revealing those things that need to be addressed, confessed or healed. Church is not made up of perfect people who have arrived. It is made up of people who are hopefully being honest and transparent about their sin and their weaknesses and are in relationship with God who is at work in them by his Holy Spirit to make them more like Jesus. It's a work in progress. The hypocrisy comes when we try to cover up our sin and pretend to be something that we aren't. Being transparent means sometimes taking a risk. That may mean speaking with someone that you trust and making yourself accountable in areas where you struggle but want to have integrity. And that can be scary. I'm going to hand over to Mervyn at this point to share some personal perspective on this issue of transparency. For me, the concept of transparency is both wonderful and terrifying at the same time. The relief of being fully known is incredibly releasing and liberating, but the process of being exposed is very scary. Our natural instinct when we know we've done something wrong or shameful is to hide that part of ourselves away and try to pretend that everything is okay. 
we inherit this from our first parents, Adam and Eve, way back in the Garden of Eden. When they knew they'd done something wrong, their reaction was to try to hide from God and cover themselves up because they felt shame. And human beings have been hiding and trying to cover stuff up ever since. On the whole, we are masters of presenting what we think people will accept about us and hiding the things that we feel will cause people to reject us. I like to think of this as a front stage and backstage. Here is a beautiful example from nature of front stage and backstage. But there's nothing shameful about this particular backstage, but it's reassuring that we are not required to be stunningly beautiful from every angle. When we consistently pretend to be something that we know we are not, this is hypocrisy, a word which in its original Greek translates as an actor. And God doesn't want us to live with the stressful tension of acting, but to know that if we're honest with him, he will accept us and line up our secret backstage lives and public lives to be at peace with each other. Church is one of those places where hypocrisy can develop if we feel the need to measure up to certain social standards. And sometimes it's much easier to act than to be honest. Uh, this is an issue that God is still working on in my life. Jesus completely knows the worst about you and me, the things we do that cause us to hide and feel shame, and he doesn't reject us. On the contrary, he wants to be our friend in that place. As we experience the friendship of Jesus in the hidden secret places of our lives, that gives us the confidence and grace to become increasingly transparent. And this is utterly life changing. Remember the woman that Jesus met at the well who'd gone through five marriages and now had a live in lover. Following her conversation with Jesus, she ran back to her village to the people who socially looked down on her and said, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Her deep emotional hunger had driven her to multiple relationships and a place of shame. But the love of Jesus met those deep needs and led her to a place of being completely transparent. This passage always makes me smile because if I met a man who told me everything I'd ever done, I wouldn't want him to talk to you. <laughs> Unless, of course, it was Jesus. And so let's conclude by summarising a few key things to take into our week. As we look closely at Jesus, we see that his life is like a window that allows us to clearly see who God is and what he's really like. If your view of God is something entirely different, maybe due to the way that he has been portrayed to you, then take a good look at Jesus and allow your perceptions to change as you see the heart of God for you. Examine your reaction to Jesus. As your life is placed in the light of heaven, shining through his life, is your reaction one of pride and resentment? I'm perfectly good enough as I am, thank you very much. Or is it a humble reaction, a reaction of humility and repentance that says, Lord, I've messed up. Please forgive me. Come to Jesus with a transparent heart, with honesty, and he will live in you by his Holy Spirit, bringing integrity and truth into those innermost places. Maybe those places that are at present are hidden. So that as others look at you, the person that they see on the outside is the same person on the inside. And together, as we journey with Jesus in honesty, then increasingly as individuals and together as a church, the world will look at us and by doing so, they will understand what God is like. And we will attract attention like Jesus did because we are different and because we challenge the social norms that leave people marginalised or broken in our day. As a church, we will be able to withstand scrutiny because we have committed to transparency. And as people encounter Jesus through looking through the window of Crofland's community church, they too 
will have a reaction and some will call out to God in repentance and become part of this kingdom of light that we are part of. God bless you. Thanks again for joining with us for our service today and I hope you've been blessed by spending this time with us. 
May we all, as we journey with Jesus, become increasingly transparent windows through which his love and light can shine into the world. And now let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.